I'm going to attempt to fully destroy your dreams in under 12 minutes. Before I do that, I want to say that I've been running a crazy awesome Facebook community called The Modern Music Creator, and if you want to join and learn more about where music and content intersects, you can do so af after this video, after this video, in the description below. Would love to have you there. So you are overwhelmed with the amount of things to do on your plate as a musician. The list is endless and you essentially have to do like five or 10 jobs just to make everything come together. It's an insanely tall order to take on. So the most sensible answer is to get some help, like a manager. For the purpose of this enraging title that you did click on, let's assume that the definition of a manager is somebody who works on commission or works for a percentage of the entire business. That could range anywhere from 15% up to 30 or even more percentage, but for the sake of this and for any math that we might do, we're gonna say it's a 20% manager commission fee. The number one reason that you say you need a manager is that you need help and you need opportunity. Common symptoms of this problem are phrases like, I have amazing music, I just need a chance to be seen. Or, I just need help with marketing. Or, I just need exposures that I can't get on my own. Or, I just need to be introduced to their content X, Y, and Z so that I can have a shot. And these could all be valid points. And to sum them all up, what you're really, really looking for is time and resources. All of that and everything else can be boiled down to just that time and resource. So essentially what you're really looking for is an investor. And you might say, oh, no, 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 John, I, I don't need that. I don't need money. I just need somebody to help out. But you know what? Uh, uh, no, you're looking for an investor of time, network, and resources. And that's as valid of an investment as money, if not more valuable to have. I don't care how easy you think the job would be to take you on. You are looking to take their time and energy and put it into you instead of anybody else on the market. And if you don't think time, network, and resources are valuable, then you can go ahead and honestly, just, just leave the video. I'll wait. <laughs> Psych, I don't want to ruin my watch time retention. <laughs> Let's go. That's awful. My Michelle's, she hates me so much now. <sighs> okay, you're looking for an investor and you want them to say yes. Let's look at it from their side. The manager's perspective. So does your business have any revenue? No? Okay, well, that's fine. Plenty of things that investors invest in, you know, may not have much or any revenue. So we, we, we just need to know your plan. You wanted somebody to spend hours and hours of their time and give you their harder network contacts, take a tremendous risk on you and you have no plan for growth, distribution or anything else for your business to grow and flourish. Um, you might have a hard time getting a manager without something tangible to show. Oh, oh, okay. So you do have a plan. Let me just, let me just take a look at my, admit the plan here. Oh yeah, it's very good. It says, uh, be good at my craft, post selfies and buy streams. That's a, that's a, that's a pretty vague plan you have there. But, but let's say you have a well put together plan. It has measurable and realistic expectations for six, 12 and 24 month goals, as well as ways to do it. The next, the key thing an investor is going to want to see is some kind of proof. Evidence that you are worth investing in and won't take the investment that they put into you lightly. And the most beautiful plan isn't gonna mean anything if you haven't shown a little bit of proof of concept or evidence that you can do it on your own first. What, John, do it on our own. I thought the whole point was to get somebody to help us to do it. <laughs> no. Okay, we need to talk about proof of concept. The importance of proof of concept. It simply means proving that any product or service is desired in the marketplace on a small scale. It can be done on a very DIY format and it confirms that people like and want your product. And then you can build from there and bring in other people. And this is how a lot of businesses start. Instead of opening up a restaurant, you might wanna go work down at the farmer's market, bring your food there, see how people respond to trying it and sampling it. If they're buying it and you keep selling out of it every single week and there's more and more organic demand from that, that is good proof of concept. So any investor or manager is going to want to see the same thing in your own music business. Can you show the data of how many people attended your last 20 gigs and the percentage that opted into your email list or the percentage of people that bought merch and how you've retained those people over the last two years? If you run a studio, can you show the data on how many clients return for a second project, your customer retention rate? The biggest thing is how can you demonstrate tangible, measurable results of your efforts to show that you have on a very small, doable scale, something that is working? Without that, the most flowery presentation of goals and aspirations will get nothing done. And I know that you've been guarding this excuse the entire video. So it's time to finally address the 
Believe in my music excuse. Picture someone you know a bit, maybe an online friend that you don't know well, but you know, you're, you're cool, you're homies. You meet them in person one day and they sit down and they make you a beautiful pie. It's delicious and you love it. Now, they say that they wanna start a pie shop and they want you to help, but they don't want no money. Oh no, they don't want an investor. They just want somebody to help out on Thursdays for a few hours, maybe four o'clock. If you could maybe stay till 10, that'd be so helpful. You know, you'd be such a good help. Plus, you know, your friends never run a business before, so you're gonna have to help them with you know everything from accounting to the legal end of opening the business, branding of the storefront, developing graphics and assets, uh, developing the menus, deciding on employees to hire, rules and regulations. If it ever takes off, despite restaurants being an incredibly volatile industry, you'll get some money back for your time. But you know, it's really about the love for the pie. You believe in the pie, you tasted it yourself. It's so delicious. You know, it, that has to be enough to get you to wanna help this person open a pie shop, right? You, it's the love of pies. What? Oh, oh, you're, you, you don't want to help with that. That's an interesting. Hmm. So maybe you don't need to be surprised or bitter when people don't want to invest in your music, even when it's great. Great music or a great product is a tiny and very important piece of the business pie, pun intended. And I more often find that believe in my music is a crutch that you lean against when there's nothing else holding up your presentation as to why you are worth investing in. It's so much easier to dismiss it on the bitter music business. You know, the industry is just unfair. Whatever excuse you'd like to believe as to why you need a manager, you will cling to it for dear life because the only other answer is that you aren't doing something right. And humans are really bad at admitting fault. The last parting question you may have is, so when do I need a manager? And I think that the best advice I've heard on this goes, if you need to ask, you don't need one. We made it, it's the end of the video. This isn't planned in the script, but that's okay because maybe Kyle will use it in the edit. Love you.